هذا هارون يس جاهز نعم Inshallah, let's start from page number 183. Okay. This is about uh, something more about Hamza. you have remembered that uh, we had a discussion about Hamza that Hamza needs a kursi, a seat, right? Mm -hmm. And the kursi of Hamza is Alif. Whenever Hamza has Fatha, a sound or uh, Kasra sound in the beginning that we need Alif as the seat or kursi for Hamza. Today we are continuing the same discussion. So in addition to Alif, Hamza should have Wow or Ya also as the Kursi. So Wow or Ya also sometimes they serve as the seat or Kursi for Hamza. And when it happens that when Hamza comes in the middle of the word and it has the sound of E, Kasara sound. Mm. Or uh, if there is a sound of U, Dhamma sound, then Hamza has vowel. And I'm writing the examples so it will be more clear in short. have the name Aisha, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you break it down, and plus Alif, plus Hamza, and Hamza has the Kasra sound, E sound, this, then Sheen, then Ha in the end, right? Now, you connect all these letters to write the name Aisha. So you will connect and and Alif. And Alif being non-connecting letter, you will start fresh with Hamza. So when you start fresh with Hamza, it should be like that. A, E, and then you will connect Sheen and Ha. But we do not write Aisha like that. Hmm? We write Aisha. I'm just leaving it like that so that you can compare it. Now this shape, this is actually Ya. This is the seat for Hamza. So this is Ya. And you remember that this is the beginning shape of Ya. Hmm? So one thing to be noted or remember that whenever Ya will serve as the Kursi or the seat for Hamza, we will not bring the dots of Ya. That Ya will be without dots. So the Nukta, they are gone. Okay. So this is the shape. So that's why you will write Aisha name like this. Tama Guta, but when we stop here, so this ta is also gone. The sound is Isha. Hmm? So do you say Aisha or Aisha? E, E. Aisha. Yeah, Aisha. 
because of the sound of e in the name you need the kursi for the hamza and that kursi will be ya and you remember that ya has all four shapes ya is a connecting letter so because hamza is coming after alif alif was also a non connecting letter so we need the beginning shape hmm? so the beginning shape of ya if you remember was this one right this is the medial then this is the final and this is independent so for writing the name aisha we need to use beginning shape of ya without dots without the nukta and this is the reason we write the name of aisha either like this or there is this same thing another word for this example of taera taera is aeroplane okay so if you i let me raise it let me give you the individual letters of the word taera after ra plus ta marunta right so here for hamza it has a kasra we need ya right the beginning ya so when you write ka ra while connecting the letters so pa plus alif and then this shape so this shape will be hamza and this will be ya as a seat then you will connect a ra and ta marunta malaika or the word malaika for example angels right so if you are writing malaika so mim lam alif then this hamza and the seat for hamza and then you will connect kaf and then tamarbuta the last one hamza comes in the last the mm -hmm. last just just like isha mm -hmm. insha now okay what happens when the hamza is coming as the last letter and it's coming after alif also then it will be separate it will be written like that this independent isha or insha or just sha a so we had this discussion about this situation also in the discussion of hamza if we go back to that lesson you will find it so these were all examples of hamza when it needs the kursi of ya the seat of ya now let me give you the examples of waw when the waw letter waw is serving as the kursi of hamza and remember that for uh, in order to give the sound of uh, or the seat of waw you should have the sound of dhamma before hamza before hamza for example the name fuad many people they have the name fuad so let me again uh, break down fa dhamma then this is the hamza alif alif and then dal okay fuad so before this hamza we have dhamma on fa so that's why this hamza needs a seat of waw so how do we connect the letter fa and then a waw and we put the hamza on waw so this waw is serving as a seat for hamza and we write the name fuad like that so 
we all pronounce it wrong. For what? In Urdu, it is like for what? What happens when Wow uh, is serving as a seat for Hamza? So there uh, is a less sound of Hamza, and it's uh, it becomes like mixing sound Hamza and Wow. So if you are saying Fuad. That is also okay. It will not be wrong. Kufu one ahad. Kufu one ahad. Kufu. And the word sual also. When it says sual, question. So if you write sual, su, then vow, hamza. So you can say sual or sual. So these are two spellings for Hamza when it needs the kursi of ya or kursi of wow. And what are the requirements for these two signs? Is the kasra sound before yeah. Hamza? Then it yeah. will be e, ya. Yeah. And if there is a dhamma sound before Hamza, then you need the kursi of wow. Now let's go to page number 185. Okay. Can someone say 185 number in Arabic? 185. Uh, 185. So you read it from last to the beginning. No. <laughs> uh, Once, then tens, then hundred. Yes. Okay, so over here we see the description of Alif Madda. Hmm? Now, Alif Madda is so common that whenever you read the Quran, mashallah, you see this Alif Madda and we pronounce it, we make the Madda also. But what is the reason for Alif Madda? What is the thing that creates this sound Alif Madda? We are learning today, right? So Alif Madda is a combination of Hamza and Alif. Always remember, whenever Hamza and Alif will be together in one word, it will create Alif Madda sound. And we do not write them separately, we will combine them. For example, the word Quran itself, the, mashallah, the word Quran, if you break it down, the word in individual letter Kaf, Aba, plus Hamza, plus Alif, plus Noon. This is the spelling of the word Quran. Now connect all these letters Kaf, Ra, then Hamza and Alif, they will not be written separately. They will be combined together and you will put a madda over there. And then towards the end you will write no. Right? So this alif madda is the combination of hamza and alif. Can put hamza over alif? Over here? No, this is not the spelling of the hamza, but uh, you can put this another you know, uh, madda for this madda, you can put short alif. But there is no spelling with uh, Hamza. I have seen though, over here some people they write it like that, but this is a wrong spelling because we are replacing Hamza and alif with alif madda. Alif can be seen for Hamza also. Uh, not in this case, because... So you have two alif now. Uh -huh. Then you have to put two alif. One, one for the, as a seat of Hamza and, and another alif. And another alif, yes. Now. So, like, one example is uh, last time when we did, uh, you know, I see, uh, like, you, like, Ushahid. Mm -hmm. Ushahid, now. Ushahid. Mm -hmm. On the Ushahid, on the alif, there is a Hamza mm -hmm. on top of alif. Yes. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Ah. Okay. Now over here, this alif is serving as the kursi of Hamza. Okay. This is not the part of the word. Okay. 
In the word Quran, Alif is the part of the word. So, so spelling on this one is just Hamza, Sheen, Alif, Ha, and Dal. No. Uh, Alif is not the part of the word. It's actually, Hamza is the part. Okay. But because Hamza has the Fatha, it needs the seat of Alif. So, if you remember the, dis the discussion of Alif also, that Alif has two functions. 50% function Alif as the consonant. 50% function of Alif as the vowel. Okay. So, over, he over here, it is serving as the uh, seat of Hamza. Uh, it's not the consonant. Okay, so this is one word, Quran. Another word is Amin. We say Amin, right? Rabba Alin Amin. So if you write Amin separately, it will be Hamza, Alif, plus Meem, plus Ya, plus Noon. So when you combine all these letters and connect together, it will become Hamza and Alif together becomes Alif Madda. So these two letters, they are combined. Then the rest of the letters, Meem, Ya and Noon. So it became Amin. Let's uh, read all these Arabic words. Some of them are new for you. Uh, how do we rule, uh, how do we read the first one? An, yes. An, an means now, now, yes. So the word an also is Hamza plus Alif plus Noon. Hmm? And when you combine, then it becomes Alif Madda and you say An. And second word, how do you read it? Uh, Amin. Amin. Yes. Third one? Akul. Akul. Okay. Can someone uh, figure it out? What is this word? Akul? Yes. Is the verb. Present tense. Akul. I eat. Huh. Akul means I eat. So if you go for uh, individual letters of Akul, they will be Hamza plus Alif plus Kaf plus Lam. This is Akul. When we combine them, they become Alif Madda and then Kaf Lam Akul. Okay. Next word is Al Quran. And the following word is Al An. Al-an is same as the first one, an. The difference is that now we have a definite article, al, with the word an. So it became al-an. So in what context is that used? Okay. With the definite article. Uh, when you are emphasizing uh, just right now, just right now, yes, so al-an. Al so is there like a haraka also with with the mud? Do you, do you have to the say say this you know with two seconds uh, you know delay? Yes, yeah. it's a it's a longer one. It's yeah. a four. So you say on on mm. right yes. Hmm. And the next word is mirat. Mirat means it's very close to English word. Mirror. 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 <laughs> Mirat is mirror. The beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu he used this word. He said, Al-Mu'min, Mir'atul Mu'min. Okay. One Mu'min is the mirror of the other one. <laughs> Subhanallah. Alan is also used as uh, right now. Ah, right. Just that is right now. Right now. Because indefinite word an, it could be translated as the time. Okay. But alan is right now. When you make it in, when you make it definite. Uh, 
Rahman. So we have some more words for that like Asif, the word Asif, I am sorry. So the word Asif also Hamza and Alif. Then go to the next page, 187. And you have drill number 9, letter connection. So probably it will be your homework, inshallah. I'm giving you as the homework. And it should be like last homework. <laughs> drill number 9. Drill number 9. On page number 187. These are 22 words, by the way. Oh. But since this is a connection, you are just connecting the letters, so it should not be a big thing. And please give uh, do it on the separate paper. So, do do we do you also want us to find the meanings? Is there a meaning? Yes, it's okay. preferable. Okay. <laughs> if you find the meaning, it will be good, inshallah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yes, you will enhance your vocabulary, Arabic vocabulary, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, you know, talking something that is beneficial for everyone. <laughs> okay. No, it's wajib. No, <laughs> no, it's wajib. Before that, it was nafal. <laughs> you know this ruling, by the way, this is the Islamic, you know, fiqh ruling, jurisprudence point of view, if there is something nafal, like nafal prayer, nafal fasting, you, if you did not do it, it remains nafal. But once you start it, it becomes what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, please look at these three signs. Uh, you need to understand these three signs. And you can see on uh, the road, these are road signs. Mamnul intezar. The first one is? No entry. No wait. No wait. No wait. No wait. Uh, no wait. Like some people stop the car and waiting, right? So not even parking is not allowed, waiting is also not allowed. Mamnul intezar. Mamnul dukhul. That is no entry. And Mamnul Wukuf, no, no parking. No parking. <laughs> so Wukuf means parking, Dukhul means entry, and Intadar is waiting. No, Mamnul means not allowed. Yes, prohibited. Okay, next page uh, you have vocabulary, so you can read all these words. Let, let's read it quick, inshallah, and one person should read one word. Okay. The first word we start from there. Yani. Yani. Yani, yani. yani means? I mean. Yeah, that means like, I mean, when we say in our conversation, I mean this. Yani now. Yani. Huh. What is the next word? Binaya. Binaya. Binaya is building. Binaya. Like this is a building, Hazi Binayat Masjid. Mm -hmm. Another word for the binaya is imara. Imara. So imarat or binaya, same thing. Maktabi. Okay. Third word, brother Harun. Maktabi. Maktab. That is office. Office or desk. So if you are working on the desk, that is also maktab, and your office, that is also maktab. Okay, brother Omar, next word. Maktab. Maktaba. Maktaba. It's a tamar buta. Maktaba. That is? Uh, library bookstore. Library or bookstore. Mm -hmm. So remember, maktaba has two meanings. And sometimes people are confused in the word maktab and maktaba. They say, they thought that maktaba is also office. No. Maktaba is bookstore or library and office is maktab. And the difference of tamar bhuta. Okay, next word? Kalima. Hmm. Kalima means? Word. word. One word, any word, that is kalima. They say kalima tayyiba, right? Okay, next word is? Jumla. Jumla. Jumla is? Sentence. Sentence. Jumla. 
let's do plurals also so that we should remember and we recall what should be the plural of jumla badal hasan no <laughs> someone else jumal g mean lam jumal and brother abdul hamid what was the plural of kalima kalima امتحان Imtihanat is the plural, yes, very good. And the meaning? Exam. Test or examination. Yes. Next word? Kalam. Kalam. That pen or pencil? Yeah. Jama is aklam. Aklam. Yes, Brother Tanvir, next one. Tamreen. Tamreen. Meaning? Exercise. Drill or exercise. And jama is tamreenat. Tamreenat. Tamarin. Or tamarin also. Yes, Tamarin is all to Jama. Yes. Al-Hammam. Mm. Uh, uh, we do not use the Jama of that. Some words are like generic. Yeah, I'm trying to think of Jama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could be uh, Hammamat, but it's not used in the Jama. It's just like that, Al-Hammamat. So when you say Al-Hammam, is the the, is there the definite the, or is it just part of the uh, We are coming to that discussion of al, the use of Al in uh, Arabic. Okay. Sometimes what happens that uh, though the word is already definite, but still we put Alif Lam in Arabic. Okay, mm-hmm. for the proper nouns also, we put the Alif Lam like the city in Egypt, Qahira. But we say Al-Qahira. There is no need of Al, because Qahira is already definite, Definitely. it's a proper noun. Yes. But this is the usage in the Arabic language that they put sometimes an Al, though that word is already definite, or just the generic. Okay? So, this example of Al-Hammam is like that. Hmm. Even you are not pointing to a particular bathroom, but still you can say Al-Hammam, any bathroom. Then next is Qareeb means Qareeb or Qareebah So Qareeb will be for male and Qareebah female mm-hmm. That means close to or near mm-hmm. Now, whenever you will use the word Qareeb in a sentence after, right after Qareeb you will bring the preposition Min mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Qareeb cannot be used without Min Because it's a something for direction, for distance. So you say, for example, my house is close to the masjid. So how do you say in Arabic? Bayti. Min al-masjid. Harib, min al-masjid. So in any context you will use the word Qareeb, you will bring min after that. Okay. Ba'id or Ba'ida An So Ba'id is far And same way You will use An With Ba'id An also comes uh, And give you the meaning of From But it is uh, uh, For You know Distance When you say uh, Far away So it will give you the meaning of away Ah. No. For Ba'id you will say An Ba'iti. No. From. There is no Al anymore. No, not Al. An. Like Maktabi, Ba'id, An, an Ba'iti. An. An an no Al. So when we use the word Ba'id far, then we bring An. And when we use the word Qareeb, then we will say Min. Okay, next word is? Ta'ban or Ta'bana. So 
तो ताबान इज मेल ताबान इज फीमेल टायर्ड वी हैड दिस वर्ड अर्लियर नेक्स्ट वर्ड सिस्टर सादिया बा रा बर यस और बरदाना कोल्ड इफ यू आर फीलिंग लाइक कोल्ड ओ आई एम कोल्ड फीलिंग कोल्ड हाई ए सी यू नो सो यू से बरदान अना बरदान और फीमेल अना बरदाना सो इट्स एन एडजेक्टिव देन नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज हरान so it will be just opposite if you are feeling hot okay then next word brother omar so this is also context like you cannot say like a drink is hot using these words okay for uh, drinks you will say har har not harran because harran bardan they are all adjectives for the human beings hmm? for living thing for and animal also you can use it but not for uh, water water or milk or tea or this yes. okay the next word is atshan atshan ha so atshan or atshana means thirsty thirsty yes next word is jawan jawan ana jawan or jawana hungry so both thirsty and hungry are for humans yeah. or animals our animals yes okay next word is zalan zalan or zalana upset angry or sad okay and misri people egyptians they also they also use another word khalsan like exhausted exhausted or so tired Okay. Next word, Saeed or Saeeda means happy. Ana Saeed, I am happy. Ana Saeeda. Yes, Saeed is Saeed. And uh, Syrian and Egyptian dialect for Saeed is Mabsud. So Mabsud means happy. Mabsud. Mabsud. Okay. Next word is Marid or Marida. Sick. Kalilan means a little, hmm. and Kalil like something you say. I know little Arabic. So you say Kalil, or the water is uh, little. I have in my bottle little water. So Kalil, hmm. and but in spoken Arabic, the more use is of Shuiya. The word Shuiya. फॉर्मल अरबिक सेंटेंस अना आरिफ कलील अल अरबी यस हमजा अलिफ एन राफा आरिफ Child no, no, that will be sagir. Sagir. Ha. Because when we say for the child, so we are comparing size-wise, like younger or taller, right? Or big or small. So for big or small, that small will be sagir, not qalil, because qalil is little. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said in the Quran, this is a beautiful ayah: "Wa ma uti tum min al-ilmi illa qalila." and this was a question about the ruh what is the human soul hmm? what is the reality of the human soul this uh, question was directed to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam a jewish people all the scholars of the uh, the jews community they came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they asked so the uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them that i will wait for the wahi for the revelation I need an answer from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So then Allah revealed this ayah: "Wais aluna ka ni ru." They are asking you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the soul or the ru. So tell them, "Qul ru ho min amr Rabbi." Ru is a word of command from your Lord, 
وما اوتي تم من العلم الا قليلا and you have not been given the knowledge except very little any mm. the knowledge of the human beings is uh, in this matter is very very little as compared to the knowledge of allah subhanahu so when we compare object like there was a sentence fi ghirafti tabilat kabira bas kursi saghir na then we use kabira and saghir otherwise we use the qalil qalil uh, so qalil is also when you want to say something little yeah. then you say qalil in the quantity Quantity. So Khalil is in quantity, and Kabir and Fagir in the size. Okay. After Khalil is Mabik. This is the expression when we ask someone, "What's wrong with you?" Right? <laughs> What's wrong with you, Mabik? Or uh, the colloquial use is Shu, Shu, Bak. Like we learn Shusmak. What's your name? Right? It be shubak. If you are asking a man, if you are asking a woman, shubik. And Egyptian use of malak or malik. And salamatak, salamatik, feel better, get well soon. Like uh, someone says, "Ana mari, ana mari da, I'm sick." So you are giving this prayer, salamati. Get well soon. Feel better. And then Allah yusallimu. Response to salamati. We also learn this response as the al uh, ma salama. When you are leaving uh, from a place or two people, they are uh, departing from each other, and one says ma salama, like goodbye. Right, you keep safe and be safe, or take care of yourself. Okay. And then the response, Allah is telling you. Masalama is less formal, though, right? Yes. So, Allah is telling you. Is that like may Allah give you peace? Yes. Oh. Or may Allah keep you safe. Keep safe. Yeah. Allah is telling you. Okay. Then uh, we will go to unit nine. and for a minute just look all these uh, signs and tell me that what do you think what are they on oh. we are on the title page of unit 9 al ahram al qudus al arabi al ittihad al jazira al qabas al watan al hayat yeah they are the newspapers newspapers ah. now look at them that they all have the use of al mm. so the following is the discussion of al that is a definite article mm. and it's very important discussion okay mm. uh, this will be our uh, you know uh, key a discussion of today inshallah <laughs> about alif lam first of all this uh, al known as alif lam because this is the combination of two letters alif and lam that's why it's called alif lam mm-hmm. and alif lam represents the definite article in arabic similar to the to the in english mm-hmm. compare these two pairs of nouns one side you say kitab it means a book then you say al kitab the book then ustaz a teacher al ustaz the teacher these examples show that alif lam makes an indefinite noun definite of course the usage of arabic al is not exactly equivalent to that of english yes now here is some difference between arabic and english in english we bring that definite article the just in the case when we want to make indefinite to definite but in arabic we can use al for some nouns they are already definite but still we can use al okay. so 
the usage of arabic al is not exactly equivalent to that of english the for example you have already learned how to say jamiat al qahira the university of cairo hmm? Hmm. now tell me the word qahira is already definite right there was no need to use al for qahira but this is the arabic uh, the arab people they use qahira with al so this al is not for as a definite article which jamiat is definite although it does not have al yes this is also very interesting thing the word jamia is also definite over here hmm? though it does not have al so sometimes we have some nouns in arabic they are definite without al also when they are related to another definite noun they becomes automatically definite like you say madinat frisco ana uskun fi madinat frisco so here the word madina it becomes definite in the city of frisco because this madina is being rela- related to a proper noun that is frisco on the other side al qaira though it has al but it is without al is already definite <laughs> now proper nouns are definite whether or not they begin with al for example misr is definite as are surya and tunis now see that misr surya tunis they are all definite without al non arabic names such as italia fransa and america generally do not take al yes uh, so these non arabic proper nouns generally they do not take al so you do not say al america <laughs> or al fransa or al italia okay although we have al italia that is al italia yes <laughs> however some arabic names they can take al despite the fact that they are definite the names of arabic cities and countries must be memorized because there is no rule that determines whether or not they take al for example beirut and dimash do not take al but al qahira does hmm. similarly al iraq hmm. hmm? how many times we you you read in the yeah. books on al iraq There is no need for al in Iraq because Iraq is already definite. If we say like Madina, you will say Jamiat al Madina. No, Jamiat al Madina. Jamiat al Madina al Munawwara. Okay. Lebanon. Now this is the uh, simple use of uh, definite article al. So you have the pair of the words. First one is without. al indefinite and then the second one with al so brother tamim read the first one bait al bait uh, bait al bait how do you translate bait al bait in english our home uh, the house yes next brother norman kalam al kalam very good pen the pen ha uh-huh. third al maktab ha al maktab office uh-huh. the office or yes. the desk Uh, yes 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 brother tanveer ustada hmm. al ustada hmm. teacher hmm. and teacher yes maktaba al maktaba hmm. library hmm. na brother tanishka uh, kursi al kursi hmm. uh, chair in the chair okay let me tell you about indefinite when we translate that indefinite word arabic word in english we also say a ah. so kursi a chair it will be any chair but al kursi will be the chair okay now related to this al we have next discussion about the pronunciation of al and this is also very important discussion uh because it depends on the letter that is the following letter after lam in alif lam let me tell you briefly and probably you already know it 
that all the Arabic alphabet that are 28 in numbers, they are divided into two groups. One group is called sun letters, one group is called moon letters. Okay? And in Arabic we say them al huruful shamsiya and al huruful qamariya. And why they are called sun letters and the moon letters? Because the word for sun in Arabic is shams. So shams means sun. And the word for moon is qamar. Now, if I add alif lam on shams, how do I read ash shams? Not al shams. Okay? Not al shams. And if I add al with qamar, Al Qamar. Al Here I am pronouncing Lam. Right? In Shams I am not pronouncing. So all uh, the letters 14 they belong to sun letters and other 14 they belong to moon letters. So whenever you put Alif Lam in the moon letter Al Huruf Al Qamariya you will pronounce Lam. Al. And whenever you add an Islam in the sun letter, you will not pronounce Lam. Lam is silent. Lam is actually assimilated. Assimilated into the following letter. It's like swallowed by the following letter. And we put instead a Shadda on that following letter. To indicate that there was a Lam and it is assimilated, it's merged into this letter. Then you say Ashams. Okay. Same thing happens with uh, when we say Assalamu Alaikum. So Assalamu Alaikum originally was Al, then Salam. But because Seen is, it belongs to Sun letters, so Lam is merged into Seen and became Assalam. Ratanvir, can you read this paragraph? Long before you learned to write Al, you learned the greetings. Sabah Noor. 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 Yeah, this is a greeting, Sabah Noor. Okay, can someone tell me about this Sabah Noor when we use it? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, response of good morning. Yeah, response of so, first person will say Sabah Al Khair. The second person will say Sabah Al Noor. And? Alaikum. Alaikum. In both Assalam and Al Nur, we do not hear or pronounce the Al, the Lam, Lam. Mm. but rather the letters C and the Noon each take a Shadda, which mm. is the result of Lam becoming assimilated into or swa swallowed by these consonants. Mm. The letters C and Noon belong to a group of letters called Ashamsiya. Ashamsiya. Hmm. Hmm. Sun letters which assimilate or swallow the lam of Alif Lam. Hmm. The name sun letters come from the Arabic word Shams. Sun because Sheen is one of the letters that behave behaves in this way. Hmm. The Shadda on the Shamsi letters reflect the length of the assimilated lam added to the letter of the letter in se itself, thus maintaining the length of two consonants with the sound of one. Okay. That is the definition of Shadda. Okay. Okay, continue reading. Contrast. Contrast the pronunciation of As-Salam as as and an mm -hmm. with that of Al-Khair in Sabah Al-Khair. Al okay, Al now contrast these two sounds. One time say Sabah Al-Khair. So you are pronouncing Lam. In the word al khair, mm -hmm. then say sabahan nur. Sabah in sabahan nur, you are not pronouncing now. Yeah. Right? So this is a thing. So what is the reason, brother Harun? We, we are pronouncing.